Hi, welcome to Shepherd of the Hills, and we are so glad to have you here for worship. My name is Mike. I am the pastor here, and we have a wonderful day of worship for us. I am so glad you can be a part of it. We are going to sing some wonderful songs. We're going to pray together, and we're going to explore a fascinating and challenging Bible verse. Together, let's open in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful time of year. This is a time of renewal and new life. The world outside is growing and greening. Everywhere we look, we see signs of your love and care, from the bright yellow of daffodils to the blossoms on the trees. Lord, with all of the chaos and struggle our country is experiencing, we ask that you would bring peace and hope. Guard and protect our essential workers. Give them strength as they work long hours in difficult situations. Lord, protect and comfort all of the families who are separated at this time, especially those who are sick and unable to see their families. Be with them and help them to feel your presence. Lord, be with all of those who are out of work because of the stay-at-home order. So many are worried about finances. Bring them a measure of peace that you are with them in this time of social distancing. Lord, be with all of the students and teachers who are learning a new way to do school. Give them wisdom and patience as they work through the difficulties and challenges that come with digital learning. Father God, you have a hand in all things and will bring us through this time of uncertainty. Help us to lean into your word and feel your presence with us in the days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
so glad to have you here with us for worship this morning. There's a couple things I want to let you know. First, if you are new to our fellowship, to our channel, we are so blessed to have you here. We know that everybody's time is precious, even in the midst of a lockdown. And so we want to thank you for being part of worship today. If you want to let us know who you are, there is a communication card down in the link below, in the, in the description below. Click the link and fill out as much information as you feel comfortable with, and we will keep you up to date on everything that's going on here. We also have a feedback card. If there's any suggestions you'd like to make, we'd be happy to listen to those. This is a time of renewal for the church. It is strange to think about it, but in the midst of all the changes and all the crises, we're being forced to explore ministry in new ways. And it's not that I would wish this pandemic on the world, but because of it, we're forced to explore new things. I wouldn't have chosen to give up in-person worship, but I am excited about the opportunities that we're having with this venue. I'm excited about some of the other things that we're able to do with helping share the, the work and the, and the light of Jesus in our community. And if you want to be a part of that, and if you're able to support that financially, we would love to have you as a part of that. There is a link to our giving page in the description below, and whatever you can do would help us spread the message of Jesus in this community and across the world. We can't all be down at the gathering, uh, feeding the hungry. We can't all be doing these different things, but we can all give. And so that is as much of a part of our worship as our prayers and our singing and our studying the word together. And we are so blessed by those of you who have been able to contribute, whether it's financially or with your prayers. We are going to continue our worship now with our reading. The reading is from Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerizines. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs, and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with the stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man 
and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave the region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. This is the word of the Lord. There are some passages that as you read through them, you think, gosh, this is incredibly applicable for life today. There are some passages that are just lyrically beautiful, and you just weep tears of joy as you read God's Word. And there are some passages that you read them, and you're just kind of like, you want to back away from the Bible afterwards because you're just not quite sure what to make of it. Excuse me. Today's passage is one of those. If you've got your Bible handy, crack it open to Mark chapter 5. We're going to take a look at this passage. This is one of my favorite stories, and it picks up right after last week's story. Remember, we've been walking through the Gospel of Mark, and last week we talked about one of those passages that everybody loves. Jesus and his disciples are there in the boat, and Jesus is sleeping in the boat, and they're crossing the sea, and and the wind and the waves come up as the storm rolls through, and the disciples say, hey, Jesus, are you just going to let us perish? And Jesus wakes up, and he says to the weather, peace, be still. And everything's quiet. And the disciples look at each other and they say, who is this guy? Now keep that in mind, that this story picks up right after that. See, this is chapter 5 of Mark, right after that. They came to the other side of the sea in the country of the Gerizines. And when Jesus stepped out of the boat, immediately they met a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. You see, Imagine this, Jesus and the disciples get off the boat and this crazy man, this demon-possessed man, greets Jesus. And now, what's really amazing is that Jesus, who the disciples had just been saying, who is this guy? Not being able to wrap their head around things that he was doing, the demon Possessed man says, what have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. How's that for a greeting? Disciples don't know who Jesus is, and they've been hanging out with him. They've been hearing him talk. They've been seeing him do miracles. The demons come up and say, son of the most high God. Kind of crazy to think about, isn't it? You see, this is not a passage that gives us three tips for better time management. This is not a passage for four tips for better parenting. This is a passage that helps us organize our life. See, for a long time, For my lifetime and a bit longer, we've been living in this historical aberration where we felt like we could reason everything out, where we felt like science and technology will solve all of our problems. But that idea, that peace that we've had in our lives has taken a lot of hits over the last couple of decades. I remember people saying without irony that it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. And I remember when that idea came down in the midst of smoking rubble in New York City. 
And I remember over the last decade, two decades, people having this blind faith that science and technology would rescue us from all the ills and evils of the modern world. And now we struggle with a scourge that would have been, would have been recognizable at any time in human history. You see, what this passage does is it reminds us of the world we're living in. A world with supernatural forces constantly in action. A world that cannot simply be explained by modern technology. With things that the laws of physics and the laws of medicine simply do not account for. This passage reminds us that we live in a spiritual world and that there is more than meets the eye. And more than that, this passage reminds us that Jesus is Lord. Think about it. This guy comes running out of the tombs, shackled, bound, strong enough to break any chain that people put on him. Recognizes Jesus as the Son of the Most High God. And he says to Jesus, do not torment me. That, friends, is a plea. This guy might be torturing and frightening all the human beings, and he is terrified by the power of God. Now what happens next, and I'm going to move fast here through this middle part, is Jesus casts the demons out, throws them into a flock of pigs, excuse me, a herd of pigs. The pigs throw themselves, all 2,000 pigs, into the water. And they drowned. And skipping down to verse 14 and 15, this is where the story gets funny. All the people from the city come out to see what happened. And in verse 15 it says, And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had had the legion, sitting there, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they begin to beg Jesus to depart from their region. See, these guys might not have liked the fact they had a madman living out in the tombs who would cry all night and scream and break every chain. But they had kind of made their peace with it. They had kind of gotten to the point they knew how to deal with it. And so when that guy goes from being just crazy to sitting there dressed calm, they don't know what to do with it. They don't know quite how to handle it. And the funny thing is, is it still happens in life today. We get into a mode where we're used to people acting in certain ways. And we kind of get mentally, it's like, okay, we have the church people, the good people, and we're here in church, and we're doing these things, and we're doing what we're supposed to do. And those people over there, they're the bad people. They're not the church people. But then God gets a hold of them. And they change. And they're cast free from their sins. And often, as those of us who have been in church for decades or our whole life, we don't know what to do with them. I think that is going to be one of the things that really messes with us post-COVID-19. Is I think God is really going to work in people's lives. People who would never come into the doors of a church. God's going to reach them somehow. Some way, this crisis. And our challenge is both to be part of that and to accept them and love them and share who Jesus is with them. Every sinner has a future. 
Every saint has a past. That is one of the things that we always need to have at the center of our heart. That Jesus died for all of us. And that everybody who comes in, no matter what the past is, they have been redeemed by God. And I want us to be able to welcome those people. To see what happens and to take those stories of how God has worked through this awful tragedy of this time and say, you know what? I didn't want this to happen, but I'm glad it worked out this way for you. And to be able to rejoice with those people. To be able to celebrate with those people. And we say, we thank you, thank God for you and what God did to free you from those things. Think about those people in your lives who you were thinking, I don't know what to do with them. I don't know the troubles and the pains, but pray for their redemption. Pray for their joy. Pray for their hope. You see, that leads us to the last thing. The very end of the story, the guy says, I want to go with you, Jesus. I want to get on the boat to go back with your disciples over to the other side, follow you, keep working, and keep following you. And Jesus says, no. Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. You have a story to tell, friends. And it's not just in the cloisters. It's not just in the catacombs. You were called to share it with the people around you, with your friends, with your neighbors, with the people who you love and you care about. You are called to share what Jesus has done. One of the traditions I have been a part of and that we will have here is that we will tell the stories of the people of this congregation. Because different faith has worked in different ways. My life hasn't been the same as yours, and that's fine. Your faith is going to be shaped by different experiences than mine was. And you get to share it with the people you love. You get to share it with the people that God puts in your path. And I want you to pray for those opportunities. Pray for those chances because of what God has done in your life. And my hope and my prayer is that everyone will marvel just as they did 2,000 years ago. Because we believe in a great God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this story from 2,000 years ago. We thank you for the power that you still have in this dark world. We pray that you would show us, you would work in us, that you would put people in our path that we can bless and be a blessing. And help us to share our faith and be accepting of all those around us. Amen. Now, one of the things that we like to do in this congregation is remind ourselves of a faith, of our faith. And part of the way we do that is going back to the historic creeds. We are not adrift in time. We are deeply rooted in our history and our tradition. And so together what we are going to do is confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to turn it over to one of our lay volunteers now. And if you'd please confess together in these ancient words. Let us celebrate our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we'll continue our worship with praying for the church, the world, and all those in need. Lord, we thank you for this day that we are able to worship. We pray that you would give us your grace, your wisdom in this time. We particularly pray for those who are sick, who are injured, who need your healing, for both the coronavirus and all other things. We pray that you would bear them up. We pray that you would watch over those who minister in medical fields. We pray that you would give them your wisdom, your grace. Most of all, Lord, we pray that we would be faithful in this time. An eternal God, amid all the turmoil and the changes of this world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In this time of danger and trouble, be sure to guard, be our guardian, the rock of our defense. Guide the leaders of our nation with your wisdom. Comfort those in distress and grant us courage and hope to face the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And now together, we pray as we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Shepherd of the Hills, um, this is Paul Balash, and as you gather for worship this morning, um, just I was asked to maybe give a little feedback behind the song, uh, Your Name. Uh, it's from Psalm 65, and um, uh, Glenn and I were just, as we often do, I often do this, I'll just kind of noodle around in a particular key and read psalms out loud, and as I was just reading that psalm, Psalm 65, came across the verse that says, As morning dawns and evening fades, you bring forth songs of praise. And I remember just stopping there and going, wow, that, that sounds like a song. As morning dawns and evening fades. And then we got to the chorus, glorify your name. 
And then just the word, your name, that phrase, I thought about Proverbs 18. You're familiar with that scripture. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it and are saved. So it just seems right to be a... Uh, your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name da, 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 is a shelter, is a refuge. And that's how, that's how songs begin, just like that, kind of prayerfully, um, scripturally, and you just begin to sing that out. So as you worship with that song, may God just impart a revelation and his presence to your heart, wherever you are right now, whatever room you're in, even though we are not connected physically, we are connected in our hearts and in our spirits. The Bible says, though we are many, we are one body. So the Lord be with you as you continue to worship him. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify. Strong and mighty town, your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder, because nothing has the power to save.
Our worship does not end. It changes form. As you go into this world, take this worship with you. Worship with your relationships, with your work, with everything that you do. And if this has been a blessing to you, please pass it on and share it with the people around you. And now we close this time of worship with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.